Today, we're talking about the top five modern investments in Yu-Gi-Oh! What's up, guys? We're back with another discussion video where I'm gonna be discussing what I think are the top five modern investments in Yu-Gi-Oh! And of course, this is not financial advice. Don't go out and spend all your money on the stuff that I'm talking about. And let me know in the comments what you think, you agree, disagree on what I've decided are the top five. Now, these won't be specific one cards. It's gonna be like groups of cards for the most part. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three or four that I'm talking about versus just five different cards. Before we do get into it, I do have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this display of Ghosts from the Past 1 to one of you guys. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know your opinion on the top five. Let me know your top five if you would like to or just some other cards that you like. So to explain what I mean by modern, I decided 2020 through 2022, so the last like three years could be considered modern. Some probably could go back farther, but I, I just wanted to go to like the last three years and see like what was a decent investment? What would be nice to pick up for the last couple years to maybe see if you can make some money and as you guys know i did the buy one thousand dollars and see what happens like the next year video series which is about to end in just like a week or two so keep an eye out for that we're gonna have the final results on if i even made any money so uh, maybe you shouldn't even listen to me on this so when i was looking through all the different potential cards i was like are there any comments that are worth it no all, all the comments at this point are garbage you know they're worth basically nothing they don't even do rares anymore for like half the year so rares usually aren't very valuable supers are still kind of like rares so we're really looking at even like ultra rares mostly are not good. I do actually have an ultra rare on this list, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, it's pretty much like high rarity stuff. We're looking at like collector rares, starlight rares, ghost rares, stuff like that. For the modern stuff, it pretty much has to be a high rarity card to be worth it. If you do want to go low and you can do penny stonks and buy some like 10 cent card that you think might go to a dollar, but that's not what we're doing here. We're doing more high end stuff. So at number five, I decided to go with a, a set that we've talked about a lot. This is not one singular card, the Exodia Starlight set. Now, we've already talked about this in my top 10 video where I was talking about Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge, how much of an awesome idea it was. We, of course, opened eight hours to try and pull the whole thing. We still need the left arm. I need to get more boxes. I still have been procrastinating a little bit. It's an expensive set, you know, but I think that this is a really awesome set. But I think we need to be careful to like maybe since it's kind of new, you don't really want to go out and maybe buy them right now. I think potentially it could dip a little bit before it goes up and it might never go up because these were actually higher pull ratios. If you guys remember, like basically one per case if you were at the US cases versus like normal, it's like one out of two almost. So it's usually a lot harder to pull starlights. However, there are more starlights. So do with that what you will, because that's kind of similar to how Ghost from the Past 2 went. Prices were kind of down for that as well. But in terms of actual collectability, a set that I think a lot of people will want for a very long time, the Exodia Starlight set really does it because Exodia has been there since the very first episode of the anime. It is, of course, iconic to people who don't even know Yu-Gi-Oh! They know Exodia. So having the absolute highest rarity in Yu-Gi-Oh! It is, I think it's technically even higher than Ghost because usually it's harder to pull, but now we're kind of back to the same ratio. So it's pretty similar to Ghost at this point, but one of the highest rarities for one of the most iconic cards, even though the set comes out to about $1,150 if you bought it right now. So we're not talking about like cheap, like you'd have a high investment to get into it. The chances that it actually goes up a lot within like the next six months or a year. I was going through all the starlights like ever made. And as of right now, the top six most valuable are all from like 2020 or 2019. So if you're looking at a high end starlight, they're almost all at least two, sometimes three years old. So if you're buying a starlight now, it's probably not going to become like crazy expensive yet. It's definitely going to take a couple of years and also like the the oppo and the ip are in the first two sets so especially the Opelosa, like one of the very first starlights ever so that kind of bumps it up in a different way like we're, the exodia will never be the first starlight ever or anything but if you do look at these none of these are actual like old school collectible cards which could bode poorly for the the exodia because this is all like valor playable area i mean whatever you call that. I, it's not really playable either. I guess waifu, I don't know. When we've got the 10K, that's sort of a collector item. That's probably the main collector item. I think that one, yeah, that was 2020, wasn't it? IP and, and Oppo were both playable, but they're very early on. So looking at the collectible ones, they didn't do so hot. So this was the highest and most expensive price to like the group of any of them that I did. And I thought it was a little bit too high to put it above like number five because it's just too expensive. You know, you not everyone can buy this. So I don't think it's the best option, but I'm going to put it in number five because I think it's a great option if you can get it. I think it's a really cool set. At number four, I did a group from two different sets. I have the Stardust Dragon and the Black Rose Dragon in Starlight Rarity. Now this one, I actually decided to do like because I was doing some research and I noticed that if you guys check out the Stardust Dragon, it's actually gone up quite a bit. It used to be 530 for a long time. It, it was like 600 on release. It kind of fell down around 500, 530. And then it's had a pretty big jump here where it's come up to around, this says 599. But if you look at the lowest listed, it's $789 for the new 
near mint. So this card's actually up toward the $800 range. And I've noticed that these starlights tend to move like in a couple hundred dollars worth of value. So normally they stay around the same price. Like I remember the effect veiler was like 400 bucks when I bought it. Then a few months later, it went up to 600 and it kind of stayed at 600 for several months. And then it's now it's at 800. So it's going up like every like 200 bucks. It doesn't usually go up like 20 bucks at a time. It usually kind of varies around there, squiggles around, and then it goes up a bunch like in a, in a cliff. It goes up a cliff. I don't know what the word for that is. It kind of spikes up and then plateaus, spikes up again. So it, that seems to be the way these Stardust or the Starlights work. And the Stardust seems to have spiked up to about two or three hundred dollars. And I, I figured it'll probably hang around this price for a while. And then maybe we'll see it bump up again because this is now like a year and a half old or something. It's getting to that point where like once it's like two and three years old, you don't really find Dawn of Majesty. People aren't opening Dawn of Majesty because the value is not there. If you guys saw me open it the other day, the best card's like a nine dollar card besides, of course, the Starlights. So no one's opening it for the Stardust. So what's out there is basically out there for the most part, unless you're a crazy person like me who opens it up. So I think it's getting to that point where it's a nice buy and it would have been a lot nicer, you know, when it was 500. But and of course, just like the Exodia set, it was really it's a really expensive buy in. You know, you're buying 780 bucks or whatever. And this is also why I wanted to bring out the Black Rose. So the Stardust and Black Rose are both playable in Edison format. So you can use them in, in formats. They're sometimes even playable in like more current formats. And then, of course, they're just collectible because of 5Ds and stuff like that. So if you check out here, the Black Rose has not bumped up yet. So it's in the similar range. It's around $500. I think it's like $490 for the low. It's around the same as the Stardust, but it hasn't gone up to $700, $800 yet. So I think I'm not saying it's going to go up to $800 like the Stardust, but maybe this is the one you buy in and then you get it before the, the next spike up to the next plateau or whatever. And because it's so similar to Stardust, being playable in almost all the same decks as it is in Edison, it's not quite as good as Stardust, or at least it's not as quite as generic as Stardust, as I would say. But it's still pretty good, and it's also almost as iconic. So it's like the, the little brother or little sister, whatever you want to call it, to Stardust, but it's not that much farther down. So I wanted to keep these in the same, you know, number four overall. I think these are both pretty decent to pick up and I do not have the Black Rose myself. I would love to pull it. So maybe I should open some Leov or Lightning Overdrive. Probably not though. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on to number three of our top five here. It's a generic Toon Chaos Collector Rares. It's not all the Collector Rares, but there are several. I specifically noted the Chaos Ember Dragon, the Black Cluster Soldier, Toon BLS, and the Stardust. Those four are pretty big. And not only are they big, they're pretty cheap for the most part. I wrote down the lowest price available. So for the Toon Chaos, Chaos Ember Dragon, $94.99. We're talking first edition too, near mint. $94.99, less than hundred bucks. That one's just insanely priced. Then the Toon BLS is $284.99, which is not that cheap, but it's also like used in GOAT format quite a bit. So it's a high rarity for that. So that's like the more expensive one. Toon BLS is also really collectible because Toons, Blackluster Soldier, Collector Rare, just a ton of stuff going for it there. That's $195.99 for the lowest. And then the Stardust, which we just talked about in Starlight, it's only $139.99 for the Collector Rare. So it's not quite at that 780, it's at 139. So you can get a much better deal for that one. But you do have to keep in mind that these are a little bit easier to pull because there's 15 collector rares. You pull four per case, usually sometimes three, usually four per case. So it's about one every four cases you would get a specific one versus the Stardust, like in the Starlight, it's about one every 10 cases. So it's a lot harder to pull, but it's also much, much cheaper. And I mean, just very accessible. Like if you wanted a Toon Chaos Ember Dragon, you don't even have to pay $100, which 100 is still a lot of dollars for like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. But when we're talking in the grand scheme of collectible things. It seems extremely cheap for what it is. And if you remember, Toon Chaos was actually somewhat short printed because of like the COVID stuff going on at that point. So it's a hard set to find in first edition. So $95.99. I mean, I think the boxes are $300 or something. That's a third of a box to get one of the best cards you could pull. I don't know, it seems like a really good deal. There's also some other great collector rares in here, but those are like the main collectors ones. So I wanted to highlight those. And the CED is like the main, like the standout. I mean, yeah, you don't use this in Go format because it's banned, but you can use it in some other like older formats because people are getting into all sorts of formats right now due to like like Simo and some other people doing a bunch of really cool series. So that, I mean, that just seems like a great deal. And the Stardust, as I mentioned earlier, playable in Edison. So, I mean, that's just a great card. For, as for the two Black Star Soldier, nobody's really playing it, but it's just just a really cool collectible card. So I thought this almost seems like a no brainer to go check out some of these singles, because if you're if you're battling opening Toon Chaos versus buying Toon Chaos singles, go with the singles. I mean, that's almost always true. But in this case, it's almost a no brainer because you'd have to open four cases of three hundred dollar boxes. We're talking three hundred times twelve times four. So that's thirty six times four. One twenty. I always mess up this mess. We're at like one forty four or something like that. One hundred forty four, hundred fifty boxes, whatever to pull, you know, a one hundred dollar card if you're looking for like the startup 
Stardust or the Blockluster Soldier, or I mean, that's 300, but for like the Stardust or if you're looking for the CED. So like, it's a no brainer to buy the singles in this one. And the singles are just really quality. So I think it's a really nice number three and definitely worth checking out. Oh, and I need to throw in before we go past that one. First ever collector rares. I mean, first ever of a rarity. So is awesome card. First ever of a rarity in this set. So just a lot of stuff going for this set. Let's go to number two. Number two, we're talking about a set which has some disappointment with it. And you guys already know we talked about this set. It's not just this set, but there's just few specific cards I think you should check out from Ghost from the past two. I have some of the low prices written down again. Dark Magician Girl is only $200. That's the most expensive one. Blue Eyes White Dragon SDK artwork. That's important. It's the artwork that everyone really likes. $149.69. I mean, that's not bad. Red Eyes Black Dragon. We're getting real cheap now $66.50 for a red eyes from the original starter deck Joey artwork insane these are all ghost rares cyber dragon $48.50 I mean that's cheaper than the ultimate rares by a mile and there's two ultimate rares so there's one ghost rare blue eyes ultimate dragons $40.95 I've always thought this was a cheap card dark arm dragon $41.93 and you can use that in Edison decks I mean for your dad decks I mean it's insane all those cards I mean we're talking four of them are under $70 I and mean, if you want a ghost rare of a card that you've always wanted and if you guys remember, I mean, there's nine ghosters in the set, so it's not easy. It took me 13 cases to pull that red eyes, which is worth 60 bucks. So they're not easy to pull. I mean, they're pretty crazy. This was a mass printed set, unlike Toon Chaos, which had like a short print factor to it. This certainly did not. I mean, there was a lot of this set out there and there still is, but these are all really iconic cards. I mean, they're very, very cheap. Like even if you, I mean, are, you don't spend a lot of money on Yu-Gi-Oh. This is less than a box for a lot of these, like Cyber Dragon, Blood's Ultimate, and Dad are like two thirds of a box. Red Eyes Black Dragon, it's comparable to one box. So you just decide, you know what? I'm not going to buy my box, you know, this month or whatever. I'm going to buy this red eyes. You know, it, you're but you're paying the same amount. It's insane. And even if you want to go big on the Dark Magician Girl, it's only $200. And Dark Magician Girl, as iconic as it is, is just a really desired card. And no matter where we go, people are going to want it. And if you are able to grab, these are near mint prices. Because, you know, if you open this set, a lot of the time they came out lightly played. These are near mint cards you know you're buying like the best of the ones you would pull you're not buying mint probably most likely but if you were to open one of these you'd have to open a ton of boxes you get a lightly played card instead if you just buy the single then you know, you get the best one possible, which is much, much cheaper and a no brainer in my opinion. You guys know I love to open stuff, but if you're looking for value in your cards, you of course buy the singles and these singles are really, really cheap from Ghost from the Past too. And we're still in the first year. So I think that there's still time for this to grow. I can't imagine like a red eyes going down much more for 66 bucks. I think eventually, you know, a couple of years from now, we're gonna be looking back like, wow, red eyes was $66 out of this set. You know, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was 40. Cyber Dragon, people still play Cyber Dragon decks in the meta. They could run three ghost shares for, you know, 150 bucks. That's the whole play set. That's insane. So I think this is a very nice value set in terms of buying singles. Let's go to number one and let's see what topped it. Oh, and I know I'm not supposed to be talking about the set, but I'm just talking about in, gen in general, most of the ghost shares from this set are some of the best investments. At number one, here's the only single card that I did for this. It's just one card. And I kind of mentioned it in our top 10 the other day. Go check out the top 10 best sets of 2022. If you guys missed it, you guys can see it pop up right here. This one I mentioned specifically, the Dark Magician from Battles of Chaos. And I kind of went through why I thought this was such a nice card in that video, but I want to go through it again because I think, first of all, let's start with the price. It's an $88 card. This card was pulled about once per case. Usually sometimes it was, you wouldn't even get one. So they weren't even guaranteed per case, but usually you would get one every case. So we're talking 12 boxes to pull one of these. So 12 boxes is 700 plus dollars for like retail. Then you get to like, you know, the, the set's been gone for a while, you know, almost a year at this point, maybe like two thirds of a year. Probably not that cheap to buy a whole case of this set. And uh, you're getting an $88 card. This card was also randomly inserted, which I thought was really, really cool. They've never done this before that I know of, to my knowledge. I don't think they've ever randomly inserted a card not in like the rare slot. It's like it could be you could pull a Starlight in the rare slot and then you could pull the Dark Magician in the same pack. So that, that's not even an error. That just happens. So I thought this was awesome and really cool like value for opening stuff up and really awesome just like a chase for stuff you could get and not only that it wasn't just any dark magician i know yeah there's a lot of dark magicians out there it was an artwork we'd never gotten before so it's a new artwork it's randomly inserted it's super cheap at 88 dollars and one cent don't forget the one cent i just thought this was one of the coolest ideas they've had in a long time and i think that as i mentioned before the negative press of people thinking it was a 600 dollars card saying it was really hard to pull i was part of that that made people they soured toward it they're like ew that's the card that everyone 
everyone said was really rare, but it's not really that rare. In reality, it's still a rare card. It's one every case. I mean, that's pretty rare. And in reality, it's also still, it's not expensive, but I think it should probably be more than $88. But people were just, yeah, they're put off by it. They didn't, they're like, oh my goodness, I saw that. And it was supposed to be one in whatever we said, six cases. And it's one in one case. It's way cheaper. It's not 600 bucks anymore, 700 bucks. It's, you know, 80 bucks. But I think that stigma as we go throughout the years is going to go away because only the people who are around for that like initial hype are going to care about that. Eventually, people are going to look at it and be like, oh, that's a cool card. How, how do you get that? Oh, you get it in a random pack, you know, at the back of the pack, at the front of the pack, and you never really know where it's going to pop up. That sounds exciting. You know, it's a new artwork. I mean, I guess if they reprint the artwork, that could hurt it. But if they don't reprint the artwork, it's like, oh, that's the only place you get it. That's really cool. So I thought this was a really, really cool card. I think it's super unique. I hope they do it again. And maybe this will be the first of something that we see. Maybe we start seeing blue eyes, red eyes, other artworks come over in this way as well. I think that would be pretty awesome. And this would then become the pioneer of those kind of cards, which we don't actually have a name for those. Maybe you guys can think of one in the comments, like, you know, floater cards or something. I don't know. They're just randomly in the pack. I just think they're really awesome. I think this is a great buy at 88 bucks. And then that's that's near mint, of course. So you're in great shape for great condition as well. All right, guys, that's my top five modern investments in Yu-Gi-Oh! Let me know what you think about them in the comments. Of course, don't go out and spend all your money on these thinking that they're going to go up because in reality, Yu-Gi-Oh! cards don't go up that often. But these are the ones that I think have great potential in the next couple of years. But if you do go buy these, I have a TCG player and eBay affiliate link down below that you can use and it'll support my channel. So it works out if you guys want to do that. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys doing that. If you want to subscribe to the channel for more epic content, make sure you hit that red button down below because if it's red, you're in trouble. Shout out to Tone Info Show, Daxter, Tomato Juice, JT Cho, TCG Trusted Cards, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanda, Dizzy, Flexi Boy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Miss Cycle, James Jance, Frankie Martinez, Nana Tai Show, Christopher Ward, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Mike Nance, Mimic Echo, Shadowfall, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.